You wait ages for the GPD Winmax 2 AMD 6800U model to arrive and then you get three come along at once. We will be taking a look at the Max 2, putting it through its paces with some system and games benchmarks and then playing some games and emulators to see how well they perform. As always we start off with the unboxing. Lifting the lid reveals a screen protector and wipe to clean the screen before applying. Underneath is the GPD Winmax 2 itself, we will show it in more detail shortly. There's a small box which contains the user manual, it is in Chinese and English languages. And last but not least we have a charger and USB Type-C cable. We will include the correct adapter for your country when ordering. The design has not changed since we reviewed the now discontinued Intel model a few months back. When folded, the Winmax 2 measures 8.9 by 6.2 by 0.9 inches and weighs 1,005 grams. On the back are left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. There's a 3.5mm headphone jack and USB 3.2 port. Next is a HDMI port for connecting to a TV or monitor. There are two USB Type-C ports. One is USB 4 for connecting to an eGPU for example. And above are the two slots where the controller covers are stored. On the left side the micro SD card slots. And on the right are two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. On the front is a power button which has a built-in fingerprint sensor for logging into Windows. The display is a 10.1 inch touchscreen with a native resolution of 1920 by 1200 but it sports up to 2560 by 1600. Below the display is a 2 megapixel high refresh rate camera which is good for video calls. There is a clickable touchpad for mouse style navigation. There are two covers which hide the gaming controls so you can use your Win 2 Max at work for example. You have the usual gaming controls, dual clickable analog call sensor sticks, d-pad and gaming buttons. Let's try them out whilst we go over the tech specs. The GPD Winmax 2 features the AMD Ryzen 7 6800G processor. It has 8 cores and 16 threads running up to 4.7GHz at a default 28W TDP. For graphics it has the AMD Radeon 680M with 12 cores running up to 2200MHz. There are 3 models available, the first with a choice of 16GB of LPDDR5 6400 RAM and 1TB of M.2 PCIe for SSD. The second and third comes with 32GB of RAM and either 1TB or 2TB SSD. For connectivity there is a fast Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. There is also a 4G LTE module sold separately that you can use for mobile data. The 4G LTE module can be installed on the bottom of the device. We will have an option to include the module when ordering. In our fan noise and temperature tests we run Cinebench for 10 minutes at the default 28 watts TDP and measured them both. We got the highest temperature of 63 degrees and highest fan noise of 63 decibels. Powering all of this is a 67 watt hour rechargeable battery. We left it running idle on the desktop with only battery mon running at 28 watts and we got an amazing 10 hours 50 minutes battery life. To note the first 7.5 was before the battery saver kicked in and the rest was while on battery saver. When running Cinebench on full load at 28 watts TDP we got an impressive 2 hours and 5 minutes. Both are very good battery life results. Let's now put the three GPD Winmax 2 models through its paces with some system benchmarks. We are testing at 30 watts TDP. It can go higher but the included software only allows up to 30. We may cover changing the TDP and graphic speeds in a separate video if there's enough interest. Let us know in the comments. Passmark pushes the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage to their maximum in a series of tests. At 30 watts TDP we got similar scores of 6002, 5964 and 6179. The 2 terabyte model does have a higher score as it uses a different brand SSD. This may change in customer models and we will notify if it does. 
PC Mark is a series of more natural tests covering day to day tasks from web browsing to image processing. At 30 watts TDP, we got scores of 6425, 6427, and 6421. All similar scores as expected. You can see a breakdown of the benchmark tests on our blog post, which is linked in the description. Cinebench tests the CPU to see its performance with either single or multi core tests. In our multi core tests, we got a score of 11,501, 11,507, and 10,991. The 32 gig 2 terabyte model lags behind here in the tests. 3D Mark tests the CPU and GPU to see how well they work together in video processing tasks. For Time Spy, we got scores of 2840, 2819, and 2771. For Night Strike, we got scores of 6823, 6770, and 6681. And finally, for Night Raid, we got 24,124, 23,936, and 23,624. We can see that the scores are fairly close to each other, but again, we see that the 32 gig 2 terabyte model does fall behind in each of the three tests. Crystal Dismark runs a series of tests on the storage to see its performance across different reading and writing patterns. The two 1 terabyte models have the same SSD and we see near identical scores for them both. The 2 terabyte model does have a different brand and we get over 5000 megs a second. As we mentioned, this was the brand we were supplied with by GPD, but this may change for retail versions. We will now run some gaming benchmarks to see how well they perform. From the system benchmarks, the 32 gig 1 terabyte model performed the best overall so we will use this for the benchmarks. We are running the benchmarks at 800p at 15, 20 and 30 watts with one additional test at 2560 by 1600 resolution at 30 watts. This is the highest resolution the display supports. We are running Forza Horizon 5 at 800p on the very low graphic settings. At 15 watts CDP, we get average frames per second of 96. At 20 watts, we got 113. And at 30 watts, we got 127. At 1600p, we got an impressive 69 frames per second. It's our highest frames per second by far on a handheld. The next closest was the One X Player Mini 5800U at 88 frames per second. We are running Street Fighter V at 800p on the maximum graphics. AMD processors are generally lower scorers than Intel on this benchmark, but at 15 watts CDP we get the full 60 frames per second. You can run it at 1080p in the mid 20 watts before it starts to drop below 60. At 1600p resolution at 30 watts we got an average of 38 frames per second. For the Final Fantasy XIV benchmark, we are running at 800p on the maximum graphic settings. For 15 watts TDP, we got a score of 7,143. At 20 watts, we got 7,908, and 30 watts, 8,614. All of them are very good scores in the high category. At 1600p, we still got a playable score of 3,353. We are running Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 800p on the low graphic settings. At 15 watts CDP, we got an average frames per second of 71. At 20 watts, we got 87, and at 30 watts, we got 94. At 1600p, at 30 watts, we got a very impressive 48 frames per second average. Some previous handhelds were struggling to get that at 720p. And we finished the benchmark test with Cyberpunk 2077, which is a highly demanding game. We are running at 800p on the default low graphics settings with high texture quality. For 15 watts, we got an average frames per second of 42.55. At 20 watts, we got 49.28. And at 30, we got 57. All are pretty good scores. And at 1600p we got just 23 frames per second, which is still respectable considering the game and resolution. 
Here are the system benchmark comparisons for 30 watt TDP. You can see on pass mark that the faster 2 terabyte model makes a difference in the score as it includes disperformance tests, but does fall behind in the other tests. The two 1 terabyte models have very similar scores across the other tests. Why does the 2 terabyte model lag a little behind? We think that the SSD may be using more PCIe lanes and drawing some power away from the processor and graphics. Here we are showing the 32 gig 1 terabyte model with 15, 20 and 30 watt CDP results at 800p and 1600p resolutions. They are all very impressive and it definitely gives you options depending on the games you are playing whether to run low or high TDP and screen resolution. This table shows the 30 watt benchmark results compared to the Intel processor model we reviewed a few months back. Despite the Intel running at a higher 35 watts TDP, the AMD has the higher results in all tests. This includes those that Intel would generally have higher scores on, such as Final Fantasy XIV. It's no wonder why the Intel model is now discontinued. You can order your GPD WinMax 2 from joyx.co.uk or joyx.net for worldwide shipping. And you can use the discount code WINMAX25OFF on the checkout. The AMD model is, to put quite simply, a beast. It has a far higher performance than any of the previous handhelds from GBD, INEO and One X Player. If this is the first of next generation handhelds to set the bar, then we can't wait to see what the others can do. Now for some gameplay tests. For these, we are running at a balanced 28 watts TDP at 800p with playable or as close to playable settings as we can get. We know that Forza Horizon 5 runs at great speeds on the very low settings, so we can crank it up to high graphics, and for the most part we are in the 70 frame per second area. It does however dip below 60 occasionally when loading in new areas, so you might want to drop it down to a mix of medium and high to keep it stable, or you could limit to 30 frames per second. For Doom Eternal we have it set to the default high settings and are getting a pretty solid 60 plus frames per second. It may drop slightly below now and again but you wouldn't notice unless the frame counter was showing. After playing around with the settings I was not quite getting a solid 60 even at lower levels. So I decided to lock the frame rate to 30 and with this we could put the graphics settings to very high. Admittedly this is the opening part of the game so you may need to drop the graphics down a level in busier scenes but even at high settings the game looks amazing. We are running Halo Infinite on the default high graphics settings locked to 60 frames per second and for the most part are getting over 60 with some dips you would barely notice. As an alternative you could go to the medium graphics settings or lock the frame rate to 30 fps. On the recently released Metal Hellsinger we are running on the medium graphics settings and are around 60 frames per second. There were some occasional dips but nothing that affected the gameplay. Low settings will keep it stable or you can limit to 30 and crank the graphics up higher. And now onto some emulator performance tests. As you probably guess, we won't cover anything before Dreamcast era as it all runs perfect. Instead, we will work our way through some of the newer systems to see how well the WinMax 2 gets on. As expected, everything we tried works great for PlayStation 2. You can lower the TDP or increase the screen rendering for higher quality visuals. You should not have any issues at all with PS2. As always, we first check God of War to see if we get 60 frames per second, and with the Max 2 it's no problem at all. Again, you can lower the TDP or increase the rendering resolution for better visuals. Both gaming consoles that the Dolphin emulator supports works just fine. We do not see any slowdowns at all with games running on both consoles. You can lower the TDP as needed to save some battery life. This is a work in progress emulator, so some games do have issues running. The games that are compatible, you should see some decent results. Our go-to game Mashed runs perfect in-game. 
other games may work but due to compatibility they will have issues as you can see here on Soul Calibur 2. For the most part the 3D dual screen emulator of Citra runs great but you will get some shader caching lags and slowdowns while playing. Once you play through they do get less regular and you have a very playable game. The PlayStation Vita emulator Vita 3K is still in active development but there are quite a few playable games. TXK runs perfectly for example and looks great on the large display. Street Fighter, despite it saying 60 FPS, looks a bit slow to me, so your experience with games may vary. PlayStation 3 emulation is overall very good and a decent number of games are fully playable. Depending on the game, you may get some slowdowns whilst there's shader caching. If there are some problem games, you could try locking the frame rate to 30 to see if that helps. The Xbox 360 emulator Xenia is in active development and game compatibility is very much mixed. We got Sonic Racing working at a mostly solid 30 frames per second which I believe the original run at. Other games will run slower but a decent number of XBLA games worked great. Both Royal Jinx and Yuzu emulators are still in active development so performance and compatibility can change from day to day. We tried a few different games and overall there's good performance. So there we have it, overall the GPD WinMax 2 is very impressive. We have seen gradual increases in handheld performance over the past year, but the Ryzen 6800G blows the others away. We got great performance across the games we tried and that's before we have tweaked the power settings, plugged in an eGPU or tried some VR gaming. We will save that for maybe another video. Don't forget you can order the GPD WinMax 2 from droix.co.uk or droix.net for worldwide shipping and use the discount code WINMAX25OFF on the checkout. And talking about not forgetting, that INEO, OneX Player and the newcomer AOK Zoe do have their own 6800U models available soon. We will have to wait a little longer as they become available to see if there's any performance differences, so keep an eye out for those reviews when we get them. That wraps up our GPD WinMax 2 review, we hope you have found it useful. You can keep up to date with our latest videos simply by clicking that subscribe button. Go on, you know you want to do it. Thanks for watching and subscribing. We hope to see you back in our next video.